Many Department of Defense suppliers are interested in automating the way that they work with wide area workflow. This is a step-by-step -step demonstration of how DOD suppliers can do exactly that. My name is Brian Aldridge. I'm a product support specialist with Millpack Technology. On the screen are various ways that you can connect with me, email, Twitter, LinkedIn, as well as a phone number. We'll start this demonstration with our form station product. We're going to show how you can create a receiving report, submit the receiving report to Wide Area Workflow, create barcode labels. We'll cover that very briefly just to show you how you can then submit your RFID PAC data to marry up with your receiving report in Wide Area Workflow. So to start out with InformStation, we've created a shipment template. We'll open the template just by double clicking it in the list. We see some information about the template. We'll go ahead and click Edit to review the template. What we put on this template in our imaginary company is the information that would most likely be on each shipment. So we can create many templates. We can create one for each type of contract or each contract. We can create one for each product line, however we want to design it. So for this template, we have certain prime contractor addresses and product on here. So we'll close out this template. And now we're going to use this template to create a new shipment. So we simply go to File, Copy Template, we see our template. If we had multiple templates, they'd all be in the list. We'll select that one. We have an opportunity to put in a document reference number. This can be any number you like. Many companies use a sales order number. We'll fill in our shipment number. We click OK. Our document is created. We'll now edit our document. This is all the information that came over from our template. We just need to fill in anything that needs to be changed or uh, that needs to be added. So the first thing we'll do is we'll fill in our invoice number and date. We'll fill in a date shipped. We'll leave our bill of lading and TCN number blank for now since these are optional for this particular contract. We see our template is already filled in, all of our address blocks, Mark IV. If we wanted to change a piece of data, for instance, typically we ship to New Cumberland, but on this uh, shipment we just happen to be shipping to a different location. I can simply fill in the DODAC or cage code of my ship to location press a shortcut key and it'll automatically fill in the address from a database that I've created. We already have our product down here. We are going to ship a different amount. So I'm going to put in 100. That automatically updates our extended cost. If we look down below, down in block 21, we already have the DODAC of our inspector. So everything is now complete, ready to ship. We click exit. It prompts us to update the grand total. We'll say yes and save changes. At this point we're ready to submit this to Wide Area Workflow. We simply click the WAF button, pick our transaction type. At this point I'm going to submit acceptance so I click OK, connect, transmit. And so now that receiving report is submitted. I'll click close. I think I'll go ahead. I could at this point I could submit my invoice. I could do it later. I could do the invoice first, whatever I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that. It prompts me with some information on here. I can add in shipping, change discounts, those kinds of things if I'd like to. Again we connect, transmit, and now our invoice is submitted to Wide Area Workflow. Some of the differences between working this way and working directly in Wide Area Workflow, once I created my shipment, I didn't have to submit this right away. I could create my shipment in FormStation or our other products ahead of time, save my work. My work would have shown in the list right here. 
I can come back later, open it up, edit it, make changes, I can copy it, whatever I need to do and have my work already queued up ready to go and then when the product is ready to ship then all I have to do is go in and click my WAF button and submit the transaction to WAF. All of this data, all this information lives on your local PC so that you don't have to go into WAF's web screens and, and do all the back and forth work that you end up doing to submit to WAF through the WAF's web screens. Alright, so at this point I'm going to create my barcode labels. We're going to pass through barcode labeling very quickly since that's not the focus of this presentation and then we're going to submit our RFID data to match up with this shipment in white area workflow. So all I have to do is click barcodes. That opens up standard bark which is our labeling software. So now I have a list of labels that are created from my receiving report data so I don't have to type all this data in. At this point I'm just going to create exterior container labels. It has all the information already filled in. I'm going to change how many are in each uh, the quantity that are in each roll. So I'm going to have uh, each exterior container label will go on a roll. So I have one. I'm going to have a hundred rolls. I'm going to uh, put 10 rolls on a pallet and I am passing through this fairly quickly there are other presentations we have that go into barcode labeling more in depth and so at this point I click print yes I print my labels this prints my pallet labels as well as all my case labels and creates all my RFID data Okay, so at this point all my RFID data has been created, all my labels are printed. Okay, so at this point we're ready to open RFID Load Manager. RFID Load Manager's job is simply to submit the PAC data, RFID, and UID data to Wide Area Workflow. So I'll just run through these options fairly quickly. Again, there are other presentations that show more about this application. We just want to show you how you can automate the process of submitting this data to WAF. So, I go in here, I see my shipment, I open it up, I see all the RFID data that's been generated for this shipment. Remember we had 100 uh, exterior containers, in this case they were rolls, and we had 10 on a pallet, so we have 10 pallets. So here's the entire list of my RFID data. I can open up one of these by double clicking and I can see the entire RFID data along with other information. If there had been a UID that would be listed here clean quantity, contract, order, shipment, etc. So I can do some other things. I can print a pack report which gives me a listing of all the RFID and UID data on the shipment, all organized pallets with cases underneath with UIDs underneath that. So now we're just going to submit our advanced ship notice uh, to Wide Area Workflow. So I just click on WAF Pack Update. It remembers the shipment that I was just looking at. I click Done. I get a uh, shipment details screen where I can review the details and make sure this is correct. If I was using a cage extension, I would enter in the prime contractor cage code here. This shows me 10 pallets, 10 cases, no unit pack RFID tags, and no UID. So that looks good. So I'll click Done, Connect, Transmit. And now all my RFID data is submitted to Wide Area Workflow where it will match up with the receiving report. Okay, so that concludes our demonstration. There are other transactions you can submit, such as a combo transaction. If you want to get more information about how the process works, we have another movie, a WAF automation overview that gives you the high level view of it. We also have a DOD supplier case study to demonstrate exactly how this process helped a particular DOD supplier. These movies can be found at web.milpack.com slash WAF.